Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. It's been a while since we've had a real disaster come into my shop. Well, it's here now, and uh, this is a pen battle. The, uh, the reel was in horrible condition, and the, uh, the owner sent it to me in pieces after they opened it up and realized that we had some chewed up gears in there. And they asked me if I couldn't put it back together again. So this is going to be the uh, source of the video here. We'll see if we can take what I'll call the reel in a bag project, a uh, real disaster, and we'll see if we can't make this thing better again. Well, you can see just by the inside of this spool that the reel was not cared for at all. And uh, what happened was they opened it up. Something happened in here because the main gear and the oscillation gear were shredded. Well, if you're going to replace one, you better replace three. You, you need to find the replacement gear for the main gear, for the oscillation gear, and don't forget the pinion gear. Because if you do, chances are that one that tooth broke, or teeth break, teeth are broken, that uh, it damaged that one or two or all three of them. And you know what, the gears are just not that expensive on these reels. Go ahead and make sure that you get them all. Because if you don't, you're going to regret that, well, I put two of them together and it's still not working the way it should. Now what's not working the way it should is a cleaning on this. There's an awful lot of sand in this one. I don't know if that was the primary cause of this thing breaking down or what, but well, I think we got it now. But uh, there was an awful lot of dirt and debris in there and that's never a good thing in a fishing reel. Alright, let's, uh, let's just take some of these pieces and parts out. I'll show you what I decided to do. and. Uh, We'll go from there. So I got a new oscillation gear. I got a new cross wind block. Got a new button for the, uh, the piece. A new bearing for the pinion gear. I've got the uh, little tie down and the clip. The case screws. Pinion gear, main gear. And that should help us solve to make this reel work again. Well this whole reel, as I mentioned, I, I just opened it up, I saw the parts that were needed, and I kind of left it there, went out and ordered the parts. So you're really looking over my shoulder at the first attempt here to uh, repair this reel and get it fishing again. On the inside of this one you can see that there's nothing but a whole bunch of dirt and debris, and somewhere in there was the cause of the, uh, the breakdown of the reel. If you look at the crosswind here, that one looks okay, but again, always a word of caution there. And then here's your brake on the main gear. You can see the teeth are just obviously missing uh, there. And as I mentioned, if you're going to do one, you might as well do them all. Well, let's uh, let's start by taking some of these pieces and parts. Just kind of putting them off to the side and put a secondary parts tray. And I want to remove this first. Now when I tested this, everything inside here seems to be doing okay. So I didn't go and order a, a replacement uh, anti-reverse clutch or the burring system to that. But what I want to do here is I want to take these off, clean that up, and again I did order a replacement pinion gear. So we will take that out as part of this exercise. I want to take all of this out right now because I want to clean the case thoroughly and it doesn't make sense to leave the pinion gear or leave the, uh, the other pieces in there while you're spraying around mopping up and doing that cleanup. Well, while I'm doing this I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I, uh, my channel covers all kinds of fishing reel services, repairs, histories and so on. Today we're working on what I'll call a basket case or a reel in the bag project. Uh, tomorrow it could be uh, a completely different episode on a different type of uh, effort. And uh, well, you get a chance to see which ones you like. And if you see one you like, well, then uh, it pays off for you. So go ahead and subscribe to that. And um, I'll try to do my best to live up to your expectations about the channel. Well. One of the things we want to do here, I'm having trouble getting that pinion gear out, so I'm going to put the rotor back on. I'm going to use that as a handle to kind of rock back and forth, pull up and out with it. If you keep rocking it, eventually, there you go, it will come out. 
and uh, it's just a little trick I learned somewhere when I found out that I couldn't really grab this too much. Now, on this pinion gear, this is your stack, and again, it was working fine. Uh, notice that there is a little piece of plastic inside that pinion gear. That's a little collar that's going to take the wobble out of the axle shaft. Do not lose that, or do not discard it when you go and replace the pinion gear. Up top here, we have a bearing and a collar. We have an anti-reverse. When you do your work on these reels, please make sure that you note the orientation of these pieces. I've had more than a few come in because this was installed upside down. Well, how do you know what's the right side on this one? There's a metal case lip on this side. There's a plastic case lip on that side. The plastic side case faces the inward side of the reel. Well, we're just mopping these up. As I mentioned, I did not find any issues with these, uh, these parts when I tested. So we're not going to go too far here in terms of putting uh, the old back into the new. Notice that there's a shim washer on the bottom here. And let's go into our basket here and find replacement pinion gear. We can rebuild the stack while our memory is still fresh. A little piece goes on there. I think I did order a uh, replacement burring for this just for fun. No, this is the one closest to the inner case. They're sealed bearings. You don't oil them, but I take a chance at that. And the collar goes on next. Make sure you dry it. The anti-reverse clutch is a friction-driven device, and it needs to be dry to work effectively. And then we can put our top piece on, and that's ready to go reinstall once we grease the bottom. Well, I'm just going to put that in the case for a moment. We'll get rid of these bad parts off to the side. And now we can do the cleanup because, well, we, we removed all of this stuff. That'll give us access to the inside. And I'm going to use a penetrating oil to do the mop-up. Now, somebody mentioned on one of my other videos that I get a little frustrated with the cleaning. I do get frustrated with cleaning, but I get frustrated more because the the operators, I guess, just took it upon themselves to run the reel into the ground before it broke. And uh, I just, it bothers me sometimes to know that with a little bit of maintenance, uh, these reels can last forever. And, uh, well, take the time to do that. Hopefully that's why you're watching the channel, to learn how to do it. And in this case, you're going to learn how to give a reel a second chance because this one was left for dead until I was asked, can I go ahead and put all of this back together again, which is what we're doing here. But you want to do a thorough job. We saw the um, all of the debris in the cup of the spool, and of course it's carried over to here as well. So we want to mop all of that up and try and eliminate as much of that getting transferred over to the new parts as possible. I did test the bearing in the back case here. That was okay. I think we've pretty much got that clean now, so let's go ahead and get the replacement parts. If you're uh, doing this for the first time, and you're unsure of how these pieces and parts go together, I would recommend that you go get the schematic, well, in addition to <laughs> watching this video here. But get the schematic. It's widely available on the, uh, on the internet. One of the places that has them is uh, mysticparts.com. They're available for free. And uh, that schematic will give you the pictorial in terms of how this uh, comes together. And well, it's a great assist when you go to rebuild a reel. All right, we're just going to put this whole stack back in. Make sure as you are doing this that this is flush with the top. If it's not flush, you haven't installed it properly, go back and make sure that it is seated correctly. If you try and do it with the pieces broken off, Something will happen. All right, we're going to just take a moment here and install these screws. I mean, these little screws don't get along. Most of you that watch this know that, and I appreciate your patience as we uh, as we do this. I think what we'll do is we'll simply turn over the turn off the camera and come back with them.
Okay, well hopefully I saved you a couple of minutes of time. It's always precious as I went about uh, fiddling around with the way I do it here. All right, I'm going to take the rotor cup now. Same thing, we've got a bunch of dirt in that underneath here. Let's make sure that that all gets cleaned out. I'm noticing that there's kind of a heavy grease in there. I'm not quite sure why that was greased, but it was. Greasing the moving parts is always a good idea, but although this part may be moving, it has no interaction with anything. It really doesn't need that, but we've pretty much got it uh, gummed up here. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, and you want to uh, test my memory or knowledge, leave it in the uh, in the comment section. I'll be happy to try and do that for you. Remember what I said about that little plastic furrow that goes in here now? We're going to put the rotor on, we're going to give it a spin, and we're going to make sure everything is working properly before we go too much further. You had to put that plastic cap in there before you put the tie-down nut in. That tie-down nut is going to hold that cap. And then just kind of work that in. Tighten it up by hand as best you can. And then, uh, tighten, oops, tighten it the rest of the way. I think I need the 11 millimeter. I always mean to kind of set this out ahead, but I never seem to do that. Give it a spin. Well, I'm optimistic now because that's spinning nicely. I'm not hearing any kind of bad kind of grinding or anything going on. And I think we'll, uh, we'll be able to do very well with this one in, uh, in building the bottom end. So let's take the... Oh, we've got one more thing here. we got that motor tie-down clip. And I think that's the little screw I brought out. That would be this one. Let's go put that back on. I think I noticed when I was taking this apart that that uh, screw was missing. Let's go ahead and do that. Little clip. Set that over. Find where the hole lines up. And get your screwdriver and set that right in there. All right. That'll keep that top nut from breaking loose as that rotor is spinning. So while I'm at it, I notice there's a little bit of stuff in the gap there. All right, that side's set. Let's come over and build the bottom end. And do that by taking this crosswind block or crosswind gear. Now, I didn't notice that the teeth were cracked on this one, but this part is like $1.25, and there's no sense going and replacing your main gear, which is we know was broken and not, re not replacing the other piece. And overall, the parts on this one weren't that expensive. I think overall, maybe uh, $25 for all of the pieces that I'm reinstalling here, which was the complete gear set. So uh, I was okay with spending the additional couple of dollars. The uh, problem that we always have with this is that the Dorn postage is almost as much as the parts. So if you're going to pay for all that postage, you might as well pay the extra pennies to get the screw or the the other block in that. I think it was the same thing here with this crosswind block. I think that was a few dollars at most. Well, one of the things I was concerned about here was where did the pieces from that um, shattered gear go? And I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them, and that's uh, that's always a little bit troubling. But uh, we'll have to see what we can do on that. All right, so we're just going to continue to move along with this. We're going to get the new main gear in now. The main gear, you can see, you don't have to check very far for this one. You want to make sure that all the teeth, are normally if you were reinstalling a gear, check that all the teeth are there, you would have discovered as we did on this project that the uh, main gear was missing the teeth. That was the issue. You want to go ahead and set that in now. And then we have the bearing for the main gear that goes on there. And what we want to do now is set the axle shaft 
in place. And I'm looking in the parts tray that I originally removed all the pieces and put in there while I was waiting for the parts to arrive. And I get questions all the time, where do I get the parts? The parts come from mysticparts.com. They're a firm located in New Jersey on Mystic Island, down by Atlantic City. I had the opportunity to go visit them the other day, and uh, it was my pleasure to, uh, to see their operation. And they have just about every pen part you need. So if you need one, give them a call. An authorized pen parts distributor. Well, the back end of this is just as much a mess as the other side was, the internal case. So we want to don't, certainly don't want to put this back on with all of that debris in there. Let's go ahead and kind of mop that up. I'm still looking. I haven't seen the teeth, but that doesn't mean that uh, they didn't fall out somewhere. I'm just always concerned when I see sand and when I see missing teeth. Generally speaking, they've got to be in the, in the reel somewhere because the, the parts are opened up, right? All right, so this is the lower end and we should see that it spins now and we want to make sure that the oscillation gear is going. It is. So let's go ahead and grab that uh, side plate. I think the only thing that's going to be missing here is going to be that little bump guard on the bottom. And I'll just, next time I go place an order, I'll make sure that I get an order that includes that bump guard. There's just some scotch tape on here I'm working off. Time to reset the plate then. That went in very nicely. And then I got three new screws for the side plate. You're noticing I'm kind of slicing these bags to get the parts out. I just, me and those parts, bags, you know, I don't know. I just have trouble getting them open. All right, three screws go in. We'll take a look at the, uh, the spool. And then we'll give it a try, see how we did. So I notice I'm missing the bump guard. And again, I'll uh, make sure I place an order for that. I'm constantly ordering for pen parts. I get a lot of pen reels to come in. Some people ask, why is it that you're always doing pen videos? Well, you're looking over my shoulder here in the shop, and you're basically seeing whatever kind of lands on my desk. I try not to be too redundant. Uh, there's no, no need to have five different videos on a pen jig master, one will do. Two at most where maybe I uh, got a little bit better doing the video or uh, I show you a slightly different view of it that helps you with your orientation. But overall, uh, I don't need to do all of them. This was set up for a right hand drive. I'm going to change that around to a left handed drive. So I'm just going to move the cap from the one side to the other. These are screw caps. These get lost a lot. If you've lost yours, you can still order these. Here, drive on this side of the handle. And then let's just go ahead and take a real quick look into the spool here. So the, the parts cost like $21, something like that, as I was mentioning. And these battles, well, this is the battle two. I think they're up to three, if not four already. You know there are three. And uh, the, the technologies really haven't changed that much. So if, you, uh, if you're considering a battle, don't be afraid to get the older versions. All you're going to find in a lot of these is just that they've been updated cosmetically. So these had sealed bearings in it. And that was the difference between the battles and the fierce. The fierce bearings were not sealed bearings. There's also one more bearing, this bearing up here on the uh, axle shaft that's not present in the, the Fierce or the uh, Pursuit, but the rest of them, well, the reel is pretty much the same. Alright, we're going to just clean out the cavity here for the washers. These are HT100s. They can be in dry or they can be in uh, greased. We'll do a light greasing here to show you how to do that. 
I use the Cal's Universal Dry Grease. I put a little bit onto the washer. If there's too much on there, just kind of mop it off. The drag stock starts with the washer. This is a six drag system, so you're going to find three drag washers and three metal washers. You want to make sure that they're all clean because if they're not clean, if it's sand or something, and we saw a lot of sand in this wheel, if it's sand or something, it's going to just rip into the drag washers and they're going to become ineffective very quickly. So the first of your drag washers goes in, and the first of the two that are round with a uh, rectangular center goes in. The middle washer is what's called the eared washer. It has a circle in the center and two prongs that stick out. Those prongs get seated into the slots in that spool. Do that uh, greasing one more time. And again, if you had excess on there, just go ahead and wipe it off should be able to see the cross hatching on those. The last of the washers goes in and then we have this little collar that goes on. And again, make sure that's clean as well. Top drag systems take a lot of hit from uh, the water getting splashed on it and sprayed on it and the like. And uh, oftentimes that's why you see the dirt and the debris and the like in there. And we're back to, uh, well, chasing these little screws again, aren't we? I'm going to use a micro screwdriver. It may help me a little bit grab that screw. And I think this, this little top end here is different too. But we'll get it done. All right, well, I think we're almost there in terms of uh, testing this reel out. The next thing I'm going to do is put it on a pole. A little bit of uh, line on it. We'll give it a full, final test here. You see that we brought this one back fully. All right. The spool goes on next. Now, when you change out the drag washers, sometimes that gets the uh, alignment of your uh, heat washers out of the way. Just be careful. You sometimes you have to turn a little bit left, a little bit right, in order to get it correct. All right. Now we got the star adjuster. Or the star the drag adjuster button goes on. This one's set up for braid. It's got a little bit of a, um, a plastic uh, rubber band inside there. That'll stop braid slip. The early reels don't have that on there and the early reels, well, occasionally you will get braid slip because of that. All right, we tightened that up. We're good. Let's give it a test. Ha! Huh. Smooth as butter, as they say. What a beautiful, nice operating reel that is. And brought back from the dead, even better. Let's make sure that our bail trips, it does. I'm impressed with this one. I like that a lot. Well, that was a fun exercise to do. How to bring a, uh, a reel in the bag, a disaster, a real disaster, if you will, back. The uh, tape is on here because they wanted to hold all the pieces together. I guess they were missing some screws or some screws fell out. So that's what that issue is. To just complete the project then, all you want to do is take a little bit of rod and reel cleaner. Just trying to find it. It's here. It's Penn's rod and reel cleaner. I use a little scrubby pad. Just a little bit of, of a shot of the cleaner on there. And just kind of rubbing it in. The scrubby pad, pad is just abrasive enough to loosen like fish scales or dirt and the like. And then you have the polish in this as well. And that helps clean it up a lot. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Again, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe. And one of the things that I just started and I encourage you to watch is this series that is the Reel of the Day series on the YouTube Shorts. I'm grabbing a reel each day. A lot of times there'll be a reel that a customer has just sent in. And I'll, uh, I'm going to call it the Reel of the Day. And we'll give you a little bit of a history of the reel. And you'll get a little bit of an understanding as to when it was made, the purpose it serves, and maybe even a little insight into the company itself. Maybe this will be tomorrow's reel of the day. We'll have to see. This is the Pen Battle 4000. It's the Battle 2 series. You just saw how to rebuild it. And I hope, uh, hope the lesson has uh, been valuable to you. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. 
Have a great day.